Hi there, and welcome back to another edition of Scale Up Radio, the podcast inspired by the entrepreneurial scale up system and designed to making navigating our scale up journeys that little bit easier by learning from each other's experiences. I'm Granger Forson, and on this episode of the show, I'm joined by Emma Price, the founder of Superfoot. Emma's journey is a remarkable story of how leading by example and living your values can transform a small solo practice into a thriving nine person clinic. As she prepares to expand Superfoot into the new seven room clinic, Emma shares her insights on growing a business organically, overcoming recruitment challenges and building a team culture based on continuous improvement and open feedback. To ensure you don't miss any inspirational future episodes, do subscribe to Scale Up Radio wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. Also, you can nominate a guest for Scale Up Radio if you know someone with an interesting scale up journey, so you can find out how in the show notes. So let's now dive into the inspiring journey of organic growth, value-driven leadership, and strategic expansion with Emma Price. Oh, hello, Emma Price. Welcome to Scale Up Radio. Please introduce yourself to our audience. Hello there, good afternoon. Uh, My name is Emma Price. I am the clinical director of my business, Superfoot. So tell us about Superfoot. Superfoot is a podiatry clinic in the heart of Cheltenham. I began this journey, it's a bit of a story. I don't know whether you want me to pile straight in or, 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 or what, but I discovered podiatry uh, when my mum actually went into podiatry. So I did a degree in zoology at Durham University, and then I um, decided to go into teaching. So I did a little bit of traveling and then decided to go into teaching. I then discovered that teaching wasn't quite for me, but I did love the sort of the variety of the day and, and everything else. So I decided I wanted to stay in science and education and technology, engineering, that kind of thing, but wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And then my mother uh, is uh, my main inspiration, actually. She's a wonderful lady, very, very proud to be her daughter. And she said, don't think about what you want to do, Emma. Think about what you want to have at the end of the day. What do you want to have achieved at the end of your day? Ah, really good, yes. Uh, not, not sort of what do you want to be? And so I really thought about this and I thought, well, helping people is really important to me. And um I do actually have quite a lot of ideas and I really do want to be a business owner of some sort, I think. Um, So she sort of had a little bit of a giggle and said, well, have you ever thought about what I do? And I thought, no, 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 absolutely not, because that's what you do, mum. Why would I follow in your footsteps? No pun intended. And she um, uh, took me on for a couple of weeks, just sort of doing some work experience and things in her clinic because it was a new career for her as well. Um, And I thought, oh, my goodness, I hate it when your mother is right. So I, um, yeah, I I thought this is fabulous. It's so interesting. It's so, uh, it ticks all my boxes. It allows me to help people. It allows me to start a business. And actually, what I did discover is a very brief sort of marketing exercise that there's not much podiatry in town there's not much podiatry anywhere really it's Mm. quite a niche thing so back i went to university and started my business pretty much from from graduation so that's sort of how i got into it um podiatry is a fascinating thing and it's one of those kind of it's a bit like we're dentists for the legs that's how i describe it dentist for the legs dentists for the legs so (laughs) We're a specialist profession, healthcare professional um, who care for pretty much everything that goes wrong with the knee down. We can't do sort of orthopedic surgery. That requires further training, but we've got a, a Bachelor of Science in Podiatric Medicine. So we cure and treat um, all sorts of problems that, that that can occur with the feet and legs. That might be sports injuries, that might be fungal infections, toenails, viral infections, uh, general pain, arthritis, all that sort of stuff. Um, and lots does go wrong with the feet. And when trust me, when your feet hurt, you know about it and you need it fixing. So it's um, it's one of those really niche little uh, professions that I think is often overlooked. But I tell you, it's fascinating and and wonderful in equal measure so, so tell us about the business then so, so the, the business, when, did it, when did it start 
business started in 2014. Mum and I got, when I was in my, actually 2012, I lied to you, when I was in my second year of university, I said, right, mum, we're going to do something special here. I've got a really good idea. I think we could be a spec savers for the feet. Big uh, ideas, right? Yeah. So she sort of smiled and thought, oh, dear Emma, here, here we go again, kind of thing. <laughs> I've always got good ideas. Um, so, yes, that, that and that's how we branded ourselves as, as that sort of... Um, offering to the marketplace. So that's where Superfoot came from. So we went to an agency, got ourselves branded and decided that this is what we were going to do. And then when I graduated in 2013, I started to think about opening my, my business and I rented a shop in Montpellier in the courtyard, which, which was great. And I got myself a little clinic running there. 2013, 2014, really started hitting the ground running at, in 2014. Um, just myself and uh, a friend, Kirsty, uh, as my receptionist. So where are you today? Fast forward 10 years. Um, I now have nine of us. I have four clinicals. Uh, team members, including, well, five, five, including me, and then four administrators. So I have a practice manager and three receptionists working as a brilliant team, nice team unit. It's good. Not too big, not too small. And still the single you location? So we're still in Cheltenham, but we've moved from Montpellier to a beautiful building called the Vineyard Practice uh, on Barclay Street. So you, you talked about it being the spec stavers for the feet. I thought that was a really interesting discussion. As, as a business, yeah, yeah. you know, we can we can go into the specific details, but as a business, you know, how do you what what's your business model? You know, how do people come looking for you? How do they know about you? How do they, you know, interact with you? What what's the sort of the, the model that you're using? Honestly, organic growth. It was very much I want to be known for my practical skills and my skills as a healthcare professional in the beginning. I wanted to be the best podiatrist I could possibly be. And I graduated with my first class honors and just thinking, right, I'm going to, I'm going to really rock this profession. I'm going to do my best. So I started off just having extremely high standards for myself and got a bit of a name. I then Along the way, got a, a colleague um, who actually was looking for some uh, weekend work and some evening work. And he, Sam, my uh, my right hand man, he joined me as sort of an associate. And then I needed some more help on reception, so we we got another receptionist to help cover the the extra hours that Sam was then doing. We then ran out of space in Montpellier, so I fortuitously met um, a lovely chap called Steve Davis, who's the landlord and owner of the vineyard practice, who took a bit of a, a, a leap of faith and said, hey, I've heard you're the best podiatrist in town. He's an osteopath. And I said, oh, that's a nice compliment. Thank you. And he says, well, I've seen your website. I want you to come and take some rooms at my place. And I said, well, there's the universe doing its thing. I'm looking to expand. So I took a couple of rooms, well, started off with one room. Then I took another room. Then I took another room, then somebody else joined and, and it's organically grown nicely in a, in a sort of a, at a pace that's sensible um, and the rep, where the reputation is just slowly building rather than let's just get 12 people together and hope that we've got enough business. You know, it's really grown slowly over time, which is, I think, for this kind of business in terms of reputation anyway, the, the right way to go about it. And... So yeah, who who is your customer? You know, do do you have an ideal customer? You know, who's who's turning up? Who's you know needing your services? I mean, we I can understand you know what you do, but who who are they and how are they coming finding you? Our ideal customers are anybody who wants to invest in their foot and lower limb health. Um, it's an interesting question. Who is your ideal customer? Um, mm. and my business coach told me that I am not my target audience, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I think in many ways I am my target audience. I, I'm, we're interested in helping people who want to help themselves and to work with us to invest and improve their lower limb health. 
So we're looking at sports uh, enthusiasts, um, right up to your everyday person just just needing help with their feet that they can't do themselves. That might be for lots of different reasons. It might be for um, mobility reasons. It might be that they're frightened to to cut their own toenails or something's hurting and they're not sure what to do. So it's it's an it's a very broad answer to your question. I know, um, but essentially anybody who is willing to invest in good quality healthcare for to, to help themselves you know our core value our reason for being is to give people uh, the pain-free lives that they deserve and ultimately be happy mm. and that's our, that's our why you know that's why we exist so anybody who kind of resonates with that why and wants to get help with their lower limb health for, yeah. for a, a whole variety of reasons that there, there are people and and you said earlier on that the it, there isn't or well, there wasn't when you first started out much in the marketplace um, for podiatry services like like yourselves. It, has it grown over the last ten years? Are there more clinics and thing around? There are some. That's that's for sure. There are ranges of different types of foot health businesses. Ours are purely podiatrists with degree level training and everybody I employ is on the HCPC register. The HCPC is the Healthcare Professions Council and it's our regulatory body that basically governs us and makes sure that we work within certain guidelines and that we are looking after people properly. Yeah. The problem with the foot health industry generally is it's highly unregulated. So anybody could set up and say, I'm a foot health professional, I'm a uh, toe mender. They can call themselves whatever they they want. A toe mender. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> foot doctor is another one. It's, yeah. it's pretty scary, actually. So yeah. I pride myself on being the uh, creme de la creme, as in you're not going to get a, a bunch of more qualified people unless we're looking at surgeons and people with uh, further training and further scope. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not medics, we're not doctors, and we don't pretend to be, but we, you know, there, there, there is, there's lots of foot health clinics. You'll start noticing them now if you, if you drive around town. Um, but it's, it's, are there lots of podiatrists around? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. And yeah, so, so what, what, what is the, the marketplace like? You know, so I guess it's not really a commodity type marketplace at this moment in time. It's still growing for requirements. You know, what, what's, what's it feel like for you guys? It, it, it feels that it's growing and it's growing very fast. Um, I think the NHS is struggling to cope with the, the patient load and people are understanding now that Perhaps they do need to invest in their own health or look after themselves rather than relying on the, the NHS for care. So people are, I, I can certainly see that people are becoming much more proactive when it comes to their own health. So rather than having a problem and going to their GP, they, they have a problem and say, well, who, who would fix a foot problem? And they're, and they're looking for, for, for that. So it's, it's becoming quite busy. <laughs> So I'm I'm just about to expand, which is exciting news. Oh. Hot off the press. Okay. I'll come back to that in a moment. I just want to finish off the last bit about about your business. It's a question I always ask, and I think you've sort of answered it already. But I just like to bring it out, tease it out a bit. You know, what what makes you different? What makes you what do you strive to be best at as a business? We strive to be the best at offering the best care. Now, I know that sounds a bit obvious. How can I put this differently? I want to, we want to offer world-class care and it's quite simple that that's it. If we can't help you, we will send you somewhere or recommend somewhere that can. We we absolutely won't keep you as a patient if we don't think that you're the right you're in the right place. So I suppose what I'm saying is honesty and integrity is is at the absolute core of everything that we do. 
um, and we're upfront and 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 in the forefront of our business is is honesty and integrity. I think that's that's really really important to us as a as a set of health. We are first and foremost healthcare professionals. We're also a business. Yeah. And we have to make money. Of course we do. We have to be profitable. Of course we do. Because we need to invest in ourselves. We need to invest in the team. We need to invest in the business. Yeah. And, you know, I, that is, you know, the, sadly the truth. You know, if I could do it for free, trust me, I would. But we can't. So, um, but we are first and foremost healthcare professionals. And, and if that means we we in terms of turnover and whatever, you know, maybe we we sometimes make a decision that isn't fiscally the best one but we are healthcare professionals. And I think that's, that's the underpinning of what we do. And I hope, and I think that comes through the, the, the patient testimonies we get. What I hope is that they see they're in good hands and that we're honest about what we're doing. We're not selling them things they don't need. We're not um, offering them services that are unnecessary. We are in, you know, our integrity and our, our, in terms of our healthcare professionals underpinning that we are world class in that sense. Brilliant, loved it. Yeah, no, I, I can see that that coming across the way you've talked about it, the way you even really think about it at, at a deep level, even through this conversation, uh, bringing that out. So yeah, I can definitely see that that that's really there. So let's let's talk about your journey um, and what's gone right and what what's gone wrong, and share some thoughts and advice for our for our audience. And we we always talk about the the five challenges of growing and scaling a business. Um, you know, generating leads of sufficient quality and quantity. You know that that market marketing conundrum. So, to, to, how how's it gone for you? And you know what's worked and what hasn't worked. But my kind of business, um, for anybody with a business that relies on personal recommendation, I think it's really important to not to lose that personal element. As you're growing, what I believe that works well for us is that we still have that personal element. I think that's worth its weight in gold. Even if you become a much bigger company, your customers need to feel like they're coming home when they come and see you. I want our clinic and um, you know our business particularly to be comfortable. And I think that's tricky to achieve, but that offering that personable, honest service, you know, they'd be almost almost become friends. They are they uh, they look forward to coming to visit your business. So I think from a marketing perspective, that needs to come through and it's not going to be a, a, a cozy family run business at all because Superfoot isn't quite that we haven't branded ourselves that way but I do we have got that friendly family atmosphere and the team that I've surrounded myself with are, we definitely are a, a family um, and actually what I, I was looking today on some of our patient comments in preparation for for talking to you today and um, very regularly we get this sort of it's such a nice atmosphere, this sort of comment that keeps coming up and it's the atmosphere that you're building. So to, to enable those people to become promoters of your business, they've got to feel comfortable and want other people that they love and know to come and feel comfortable too. And I think that for me is the most powerful marketing strategy that you've got. It's just to create an environment that other people want to share. And do you do you use that in any way within within marketing and generating leads? You know, for for doing that, or you know? I think honestly, it's it's much more based around personal recommendation in terms of in terms of our marketing. Our marketing strategies are. I find marketing difficult, like we were saying earlier. I, you know, I do find the marketing side of things a little bit like black magic. You know, you're never quite sure what's going to work and how to measure the impact of how you're marketing. Um, but I, I would say for sure the, the videos that we do put out and the, like I say, the testimonials and things that we get always seem to be centered around. It's a really nice place to be. It's very comfortable. We enjoy visiting. 
Um, I, f- I feel like that's that's kind of our U- uh, almost like a USP. But in terms of marketing, um, honestly, I don't do an awful lot because we we're growing so naturally and uh, organically. We we it's we're still enjoying that slow growth, yeah, but steady growth. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, that's really obvious for, through through the way you're bringing that family atmosphere through, you know, effectively through referral marketing and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, people are referring you for doing that. You Yes, you're putting yourself out there on social media where you talked about videos and uh, doing those things. But what 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 have you tried that didn't work then? What, what, what was unsuccessful for you? I've tried leafleting i've tried being on uh sports event banners i've tried being on gp appointment cards i've tried being in local delivery magazines and i don't know how much those things have worked because i think what that is offering people is brand recognition they're seeing the the name, and you know what the old the old adage is: someone's got to see something ten times before they recognise it. So, how effective those things have been, I don't know. I don't think I'll ever know. But I don't see people saying, "Oh, I saw you on this," or "I saw I had a leaflet through the door," or "I saw you on my GP no um, appointment card." I've never had anybody in ten years say that to me. But every time, oh, my surgeon recommended you or my best friend's next door neighbor comes here. (laughs) Um, So I think for for my type of business, personal referral is is the key. And the marketing that hasn't worked has been that sort of blanket leafleting. But like I say, I don't know if it's worked. I don't know how effective it's been in terms of brand recognition, but... um, what I do know that I think has worked well is is the Google My Business profile that's been very strong for us. I think you know putting those testimonials, putting those videos, putting those posts, those blogs, and heavily hitting the SEO. I feel has been most impactful because what you just got. I suppose you've got to think about where your customers coming from, and it's Google or Bing or Yahoo or. Um, whatever else yeah. there is out there i, I don't know whether search engine <laughs> jeeves us jeeves yeah. any of those yeah. um so i think hitting up the free google my business page google maps particularly uh, i think has been the biggest push we've had recently and i think that's actually been been pretty effective for us mm. along with the reviews that we've had we've we've um, got 65 fast five star reviews now so we do okay. send out patient uh, feedback forms. Anyone who's come to visit us as a new patient, certainly we've given them new patient feedback forms. And if they've given us a high mark, we've asked them to do a Google review for us. And we've, yeah, we've we're slowly and steadily, couple of, one a week, something like that, getting a new one. So we're doing really, really well. We're really pushing that at the moment. And I think, again, that comes back to people like personal referrals, how do I know this podiatrist is any good? Well, there's 65 people giving it five stars. So yeah, I'll trust that. Yes, yes, definitely. So one of the other challenges uh, of the five challenges is about finding the right the right team, finding the right staff and people to join you. How, how what What's worked and what hasn't worked for you around that? Yes, yeah, it's an interesting one. This is a big debate we have in podiatry generally because there's a shortage. There's a, there's a national shortage of podiatrists. And I belong, like I said earlier, to a business group and everybody bangs on about there being a shortage of people. And honestly, I, and I, this is going to sound super arrogant. It's, it's I'm not trying to be arrogant, but I've never struggled to recruit. And I think that might be because as a business owner, I very rarely say no to a conversation. I very rarely say no to an invitation to a meeting, a podcast, any any sort of uh, opportunity where I can 
get my face and my business out there, I do. And I think that's sort of trickled around and, and I regularly get, I'm always, always recruiting. I think that's key, always. And therefore, when somebody says, hey, there's a vacancy open on your webpage, I'm, I, you know, I go, yeah, there is. And like, oh, do you want to have a conversation? Yes. Um, and sometimes it leads to nothing and sometimes it, it, it leads to offering somebody a position. But I, I find that putting myself out there often in lots of, on lots of different types of media, where, where, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, I make sure that my name is, and my business name is in the mind's eye, in the, podi in the podiatry world particularly. So at conferences, I'll volunteer to do a talk at um, student meet and greets, careers fairs, I've put my name down. And the college, the Royal College of Podiatry kind of know who I am. All of the trade stands know who I am. All of the universities know who I am because I take students. You know, I'm constantly networking all the time. It's exhausting, but it's it works. And I've got um, three people currently asking for jobs. Um in where apparently there's a shortage of podiatrists in this country. So that's my, that's, that's how I do it. Yeah. Well, we, we, we talk about always be recruiting, you know, that that's one of our phrases, you know, it, it's so important to be always on the lookout because what that does, you may not have a position as of now, but if you're always recruiting, as you rightly said, you're always looking for those opportunities and meeting the right people because, you know, you know, it's local people, it's people that you need, it's, you know, those opportunities that come along if you're doing that. And I, I love your thought there of, Networking is not just about networking. Networking is also putting your name out there and that opportunity of meeting new, exciting people that will be right for your business. So when 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 you know, it's also about not just finding the staff, but knowing the staff will fit to your organisation. So how, how do you how have you gone about making sure you've got the right fit of the individual? Have you ever got it wrong? I have. I have. Um, it's easy to. In the early days, I found that. I was far too trusting too soon. And that's that's by nature, my nature, um, my kindness. I am a kind person at heart and that sometimes gets me into trouble or, or isn't always my strongest asset, which I am learning. Uh, however, however, I feel like I've got it. I've got it right now. The, the people that were wrong were ones that I, I just trusted too soon. And it, it sounds harsh and, it, you know, again, I, it doesn't sit well with me, but you know, I was always told to hire slow and fire fast. And it's that it's, famous uh, expression. Yeah. And actually it's true. If you, we, as, as business owners, I'm sure you, you can resonate. You, we, we hold on to people for too long. We, even when you know they're not quite right for your organization. So I think a long interview process, a long probation process for, for, the business is, is the right thing to do. And often they will know they're not right there as well. I think if you're being really honest, and I think that's the other key is to be honest Yeah, always. So when it, when I haven't got it quite right, we've, we've managed to part ways reasonably, um, effectively and amicably that that's fine. But what I do now is I am looking for i'm looking for conversation when i'm interviewing somebody if i say oh tell me a little bit about you in your spare time and they say oh i like windsurfing for example um that was random windsurf i don't know where that came from windsurfing for example and then they say hey what do you like to do that's what impresses me because as soon as somebody picks up a conversation with me I feel engaged. And I think, well, if I'm going to be engaged, my customers are going to be engaged. Yeah. It's not, they're not talking about themselves the whole time. They're sort of conversing with me. So that's one feature I look for is can this person turn this interview into a conversation? Yeah. And that, I, but I like that when that happens. Um, I also, honestly, 
if I'm being really honest, I I just sit with that person for 45 minutes and think, do I want to go out for a beer with you? Do I want to hang out with you? We've got 40 hours a week together. You know, is this comfortable? And I know you can't always tell that within 45 minutes or an hour of meeting somebody, but I think if you do listen to your gut and your instinct, it's something I'm learning again, listen to that gut. It's something, it's telling you something. Um, you, I think, yeah, I think you'll be surprised at how, how your gut will lead you the, the right way. So they're yeah. the things I look for. Com am I comfortable? Not overly comfortable, but am I comfortable with this person? And are they conversing with me? Are they turning this into a conversation? Or am I giving them everything? Mm. No, I think that's, that, that's brilliant. Yeah, and I, I often talk to you know my, my clients and talk about it's a absolute yes or it's a no. Don't don't. Well, I could just get them there. Or they yeah, they've got this real skill that I really need, but they're just not quite. I can I can sort no no. That's absolutely. It's got to be a no if your if your instinct is telling you that then. Absolutely not. So, yeah, and, don't try and change people. It's yeah, not going to work. No, <laughs> no. The, the role of a business is not necessarily to change people. Maybe give them some experiences so they can grow and become, yeah. yeah, greater at their their knowledge or their capability. Absolutely, have a journey for them, but not 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 to change them uh, for doing that. So, so you, you know, you recruit staff. You've, you've got you've got an interesting method around that. I, lo I love that interview technique. Um, so. What what next? They come on board. They they're in the business. How, how do you how do you you know organize and motivate motivate staff to be focusing on the, the right things, which is the next challenge that we all have. Well, a combination of things. First of all, we live our company values, and I think the culture that I am developing, or hopefully have almost developed, uh, you know, because it's a, a never ending thing is one of learning, uh, you know, we call it failing forwards. Uh, it's one of openness and, and asking for help. It's one where we've got each other's backs and one where we are, we call it wow. You know, we, we're motivationing, mo motivational. We motivate each other. We are educating each other. We're educating our patients. So we're motivating we're innovating and we're educating and you know that's kind of what we do and we um as a company live eat breathe those values and, and so how, how, and do, you somebody... do, how do you do that because you talked about living living your values it's always a great conversation how how do you do that i mean i love those values They're absolutely brilliant you know failing forwards i thought beautiful so good to... yeah yeah for sure i think i I, well, leaders go first. So I make mistakes because I'm a human being and I broadcast it to them in meetings and say, oh, I did this the other day. didn't work very well. I'm not going to do that again. Um, this is how I'm going to implement change. And this is how I'm going to do better next time. Anyone else got anything? Um, that you know, day day one, uh, you know, that's that that's always on our agendas. We have a fixed agenda for every meeting. We have, by the way, very regular meetings. If we if we don't meet as a group once a week, I'd be surprised. It's usually more than that. Everybody has access to regular conversation, and it's. I don't like. Um, have you got a minute in the corridor? Because I say park it bring it to the meeting because other people need to learn from this conversation. Unless it is, where's the stapler? <laughs> Have you moved the stapler? That we can fix in a, in a just a minute conversation. But other than that, if it's a, oh, I had this patient and da, 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 da. I will, I, my response is often, I will talk to you. Yes, of course, let's, let's go through this, but can we, can this be on the agenda for the meeting? Because I think there's, there's some learning here and it's always about learning. And if I'm, I'm always pushing, I'm always asking people, how do we do that better? How, how do you, is that good? Is that the best we can do? Can we, can that be better? Um, and now it's, it's just the way we roll it. There's always a, 
let's celebrate what we've done well. There's always a celebration of our wins. Um, and I, and in terms of giving feedback, I ask permission to give feedback and say, can I give you some feedback there? Sometimes it's positive and I try and catch people doing good, but sometimes it's, it's something to work on. But if it's an open culture of feedback, then they will give me feedback. Emma, can I give you some feedback? Great. Yes, please. And, and we, we all accept feedback whether it's positive or I don't like to say negative, but you know, something to work on. Um, and within that, we then breed a culture of improvement. Fantastic. I mean, you, you talked about a, um, a family culture type, you know, th thinking around everything that you do, but actually you've gone beyond family because sometimes family will not accept criticism from their siblings. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you've, you've nurtured something well beyond the family there, but that culture of continuous improvement, you know, well, you're, you're ringing all of my bells on that one. That is such an important aspect of, of any business. And, you know, a lot of business owners struggle to really understand and see that uh, to allows that growth to happen. So really well done there. Thank so, you. so let's, let's, let's meet up in, you know, five years time. Let's have a coffee. Let's talk about what the, the last five years have been. So what's going to happen over the next five years to be, you know, for you personally and for the business to be successful. And you mentioned earlier on, which I said I'd come back to, you talked about um, some growth plans. So what's coming next for you? Uh, expansion. So the vineyard practice is, has been our home for six years and I'm very, very grateful to, to, to Steve, big shout out to Steve. If he's, if he's listening, <laughs> uh, he's a wonderful man, but it's, uh, the business has grown and it's time to, we're bursting at the seams. So what a time to move. So I found a, a building on the Bath road and, uh, at 11 o'clock this morning, I received the lease. So I'm just about to sign. So we are talking hot off the press. Oh, it's so. a seven, seven room clinic. Uh, so I currently have three, three clinical rooms. So it's a seven, six clinical rooms with a gait analysis suite, which is where we will do our musculoskeletal and gait analysis. So it's kind of a, a lab, if you like, which is the dream. So yeah, six clinical rooms, a nice big reception, some car parking right on the top of the bar, bath road by the Norwood Arms. And um, that's that's going to be our home for the next 10 years, I would imagine, unless something catastrophic happens in the next 24 hours. <laughs> um, it's a 10-year lease, which is very exciting. So I have a couple, like I say, I'm always recruiting. So I've got a couple of rooms I need to fill. The patients will come, I'm sure. You build it and they will come in, the, is it Wayne's World? Or the Field of Dreams? Or Field both? of Dreams. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's that's it. That's my kind of big 10-year plan. Five-year plan uh, is to be rocking at that point. And then, so five, yeah, in five years' time, I want that to be at full capacity. And then in, I'll, I'll let the jelly set for another five years and just cruise. No, I won't. I won't do that at all. I, I, um, I can't believe that. Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm lying to myself. I'm lying to you there. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that that's that's what's happening uh, at the moment, which is taking up a lot of my brain space. Um, and then who knows? I mean, I'm I'm all like I say, I'm always looking. I'm always having conversations. Perhaps it's the franchise option. Perhaps it's open other branches. We have got mum's business in Birmingham but that's we're actually going to be closing that one down as she retires so we've got um uh, we're just going to have the one the one super for for now and then once I've got this one really bedded in then it I don't know more conversation I had an interesting conversation with a franchise expert the other day actually funnily enough mm. so we shall see watch this space but it as it stands I've got five years to get this this at full capacity so wow exciting really not exciting. much to do <laughs> <laughs> no we never stand still as uh, as entrepreneurs and business owners do we and uh you know going right back to the very beginning you, you had that sort of conversation with your mum saying oh, i think there's something here let's let, let, let's do this and i can see how that that's driving you forwards and and what you're thinking about and what you're achieving you know and i love this idea that you then went yeah actually let's go back to university, relearn, let, let's learn the skills that I need to be able to do that. You're building that 
dentistry for legs. Uh, I thought that was a really uh, an interesting uh, definition of, of what you do. But you took an idea, you've grown that idea, you've developed that idea. Um, and, but focusing on excellence, that's what I love, love from this conversation, is that real focus on being the best of what you do, but not just what you do, how you delight your clients, how they, the journey that they're with you, the, the building that family feeling that they want to come back, they recommend you to other people. And your organic growth has come about from that because your real focus is on quality and excellence. And that's really run through of everything you've done. But you've not just applied that to the business, you've applied that to how you develop your, your people, you know, and that, that beautiful culture that you've talked about. Now you Use the word beautiful deliberately there um you know talking about you know the values that you've got uh focusing on how those values are brought to life you know failing forwards the uh, um the helping each other um acting with each other's backs you know and i just thought that was really powerful that you've actually found your way through the cultural question which so many business owners you know read about, think about, get told about, but you're actually living it and showing how that happens. And yes, you've got some fixed things. There are meetings, we have meetings, but the meetings are there to learn and grow and share. They're not just one, two, three, four from the from the agenda. It's about doing that. And I love that expression where you said, let's, let's, let's not talk about it right now. Let's bring it up in the meeting so everybody can learn from that. Um, and I think that's what's really come across for me, the real power of how you've developed a culture around you, your style, but you've brought that alive through your team. And therefore, the result of that is the growth that you've achieved on that. So it's been a, it's been a fantastic conversation, Emma. Thank you so much for helping us explore those three challenges that every business owner uh, feels and, and has and giving some thoughts and advice. We always finish with a quick fire round. OK, so let's have a go at uh, a few short questions. Um, so if you could go back to your younger self, what advice would you give yourself? 100%. Yes, you can. Stop doubting yourself, woman. Brilliant. Books. <laughs> any books you recommend? Maybe not necessarily business books, but any type of books. Ooh, I'm currently reading Atomic Habits by James oh, Clear. Book. Love yeah. that. Great book. And um, Twinsies. <laughs> just about, ah, to, just about to read Dare to Lead by Brené Brown. So Brené Brown. Great book. <laughs> um, yeah, they're the two I'm focusing on. Sadly, at the moment, it really is uh, business books. Books, although um, Kitchen Table Wisdom, really highly recommend that. Ah, Kitchen Table Wisdom, interesting. Okay, we'll definitely look at that one. Um, podcast? Do you listen to any podcasts? Any worthwhile? Um, I, I've got to admit, it's broken my heart a little bit. I love a bit of Michael Mosley. His um, his uh, just one thing. Mm. Really, I love that thing. Love that podcast. Yes, big, big shame. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, onto your mobile phone. Any apps that make a difference for you? Oh, um, meditations. Okay. Bedtime meditations. Um, and uh, addicted to my Fitbit. Sorry. <laughs> and the how great many steps have I done? How many steps have I done? <laughs> yeah, so what was my sleep score? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. But no, meditations is great. It really helps me just to clear my mind and get good sleep. And that's, that helps. helps Brilliant. Um, my favorite question of all, who's had the most influence on you as a business leader? <gasps> Ooh. Um, my... The business group I'm part of uh, from, well, for the last four years is centered around a chap called Troy Parsons, who's a podiatry business owner in America, in Australia, uh, how he's run his business. He's given us all the do's and don'ts and what I did wrong and what I did, what I've done that works. And he's written it down in a recipe book, basically. And it's wonderful. So uh, Troy Parsons would be the business owner that's shaped my journey but all of the guys that in the business group called the hive that are the coaches that surround him um very influential amazing brilliant um and finally emma how can people get hold of you wow okay they can find me on linkedin i'm uh, under emma price and uh, another business but we won't talk about uh, right now is called podypedia so that'll be my um 
It's my podiatry information website that I've started. So they'll find me under Podipedia or Emma Price there in LinkedIn. That's one of the main ways. Um, superfoot.com, um, they can always uh, email superfoot, uh, cheltenham at superfoot.com. That's fine. And I will also be on Facebook or Instagram. Brilliant. Well, Emma, thank you so much for an amazing conversation today. There have been some really great thoughts and advice in there, and I wish you well with everything that's coming up. Thank you so much. It's been really lovely speaking to you. I really appreciate your time. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed that discussion. And if you're building and scaling your own business, you might be interested in our book, The Entrepreneurial Scale-Up System. And it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a practical handbook around scaling a business in a structured way. And you can order a copy at all your favorite online retailers, including an audio version. Or you can find it and other supporting resources at our website, www.esusgroup.co.uk. That's esusgroup.co.uk which is spelt E-S-U-S-G-R-O-U-P dot co dot UK. Thank you. This has been a Monkey Pants Productions podcast.